Ice stop. Ice swap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. baby. Poke it out. Whoa. Poke it out. Poke it out. Whoa. Okay, boys, we gotta talk. So today we're gonna be talking about what's next for the 2019 New Orleans Saints. We have a lot to talk about. Um, this isn't going to be like my State of the Saints video where I talk about um, the division and everything. This is purely what's next for the New Orleans Saints. Can they rebound um, facing the adversity that they're facing currently with all of these injuries? Alex Anzalone, Traquan Smith hasn't been practicing. Drew Brees is out for six weeks. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be talked about, and today we're going to be talking about all of that. It's been a tough start to the season, one of the toughest starts to an NFL season for this team that I've seen in a very long time. Anytime you lose Drew Brees, which this is like the first long, the first extended period of time we've ever lost Drew, it's a big deal, okay? And there's a lot of adjusting that this team has to do, but it's not all bad news. Now, don't – I'm going to tell you this right now. Do not go into next week 100% expecting a win. You might have your heart broken. And I'm just gonna, I'm just being 100% real. The Seattle Seahawks, since 2013, are 15-0 in September football at home. Um, I don't really know if that's a, a – we did the – we – we beat the uh, the Houston Texans with a stat just like that. They were 32 and one while leading at the half. We still beat them, but that was a different team. We still had Drew. I'm gonna go look at the accolades for the Seattle Seahawks right now. Um, the Seattle Seahawks, including the playoffs since 2012, are 52 to 52 and 0 when leading by four or more points at halftime. Since 2010, yeah, like I said, the Seahawks have a 15-0 record in home games in September under Pete Carroll. And Seattle has won four of its five games when trailing at halftime. So the Seattle Seahawks are a very good team. Um, they don't struggle to overcome adversity, and they don't struggle to create adversity for other teams. Um, that's just one of the games we have to look at, but... Just don't go into next week expecting to go into Seattle and shock the world and beat Russell Wilson in front of the home crowd. Don't don't ride on that. Um, we can hope for it, yeah, because I'm not saying we're out of the game at all. I'm just saying it's going to be a very tough game to win. Do not let how that outcome comes out determine the fate for your emotions the rest of the week because it's still an experimental week. The one thing I can say that's going to help us during this six-game six stretch without Drew Brees is the element of surprise. Sean Payton went on, uh, went in an interview and talked about how, one, he's not even going to name a starting quarterback against the Seattle Seahawks, so clearly we're getting some Teddy and Taysom action, which is something that is really unheard of, to be honest. We're really going into these games, guns blazing, with two quarterbacks, and Taysom's athleticism is something that is game-changing. Um, when you need a momentum shift, Taysom will break out for a 25-yard run and get you that against the Seattle Seahawks defense that isn't the Legion of Boom anymore. So when we look at what's next for the 2019 New Orleans Saints, we need to start by looking at our schedule. Uh, the next six weeks, with Drew Brees being absent, play the Seahawks away, Cowboys at home, Buccaneers at home, Jaguars away, Bears away, and Cardinals at home. That's three home games, three away games. I already talked to you a little bit about the Seattle Seahawks game. The Cowboys game, um, Dak Prescott has like an 82-83% completion percentage right now through the first two weeks. The Cowboys are on fire. That injury to Michael Gallup is going to help or help our case a bit. But the Cowboys are on fire. Um, I would put it in the book that we'd beat them with Drew, but... You know, the Buccaneers have a really, really, really improved defense that's actually been carrying them um, to almost close out games. They won week two against Carolina using their defense. Um, the Jaguars, Gardner Minshew is doing some crazy things. Then we put the Bears away and the Cardinals at home. We need to split this series three to three. We need to find a way. Sean Payton needs to write something up to get us at least three wins and at least just th three wins. That's all we need because then we'll be four and four and Drew Brees can come back and run the table. Now, the last eight games are all extremely winnable for Drew Brees. He comes back to the best possible situation and let me tell you why. 
Falcons at home, Buccaneers away, Panthers who are 0-2 and Cam Newton looks like garbage at home, Falcons away, 49ers at home, Colts without Andrew Luck at home, the Titans who are down 14-0 to the Jacksonville Jaguars while I'm recording this video away, and the Panthers who look terrible away. The one game I could see us struggling with is the Falcons away. That's it. I don't see the Falcons at home. No. The and, and Drew Brees return game, if he comes back at exactly six weeks, the Falcons at home? No. The Buccaneers away? No. The Panthers at home? No, definitely not. The Falcons away, maybe. 49ers at home. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo can't do it in the Superdome. There are a lot of good things to look at as far as what's next for us. We need to establish some type of game plan and momentum to help push Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill to succeed through these next six weeks. After we do that, we need to go into these eight games. Drew Brees needs to play every game like it's the final drive of the Super Bowl and take us, try to run the table as well as he can. We are in not too bad of a position. Everybody's writing us off already. What's next for the New Orleans Saints? Hopefully, a 4-4 four four record by Drew Brees coming back, and he can run the table. But until he comes back, we need players like Michael Thomas and Jared Cook to step up. Teddy Bridgewater can't do it all on his own. Um, we've seen versus the Rams, he was throwing passes, drop. Throwing passes, drop. Very, very, very inconsistent play by the pass catchers in that game. Jared Cook looked I'm not even going to say what Jared Cook looked like, but he looked bad. Michael Thomas had a fairly good game, and we did promote Lil' Jordan Humphrey from the practice squad, assuming, um, that's only assuming because Keith Kirk was on IR and Traquan Smith isn't even practicing, so we don't know what's going to happen with that. We need to go ahead and secure three wins during this six-week stretch without Drew Brees, get him back, try to run the table. That's all. That That's what's next for us. That is the challenge. A championship team is not a championship team without adversity and lesser than New England Patriots. That is something I've been saying, and that is something I will stick by for the rest of my life. Listen, the New Orleans Saints have to utilize the element of surprise 100%. Use the two quarterbacks to your advantage. You have a Taysom Hill who can throw the deep ball, is decently accurate, can run out of his mind like a running back. He is literally pure muscle. Use that athletic talent to your advantage. Teddy Bridgewater is definitely, don't argue with me on this, the more accurate of the two, the better pure passer. Use that to your advantage. If one QB isn't playing well, we have another one. We need to utilize the two quarterback situation we also have to get the run game going. Alvin Kamara had 40 rushing yards last week. Latavius Murray didn't do anything either. If we don't get that run game going, if we get it going, we'll be able to succeed through the air on play action passes. Teddy Bridgewater excelled a lot at, in Minnesota because they would establish the run game and beat teams through the air using the play action pass. If we can do that, we can put our quarterbacks in a position to succeed. We just have to follow basic, pure football knowledge. We have to keep our offense on the field, keep our defense off the field, and control the ball game. That's all we need. We need to give the defense rest. Marshawn Lattimore has allowed 200 yards in the past two weeks and a 100 in a perfect passer rating. Perfect. But it's not his fault. He has, they've, the secondary has been out on the field. The defense has been out on the field longer than I can, I can't even, I can't explain it to you. And Houston has a very potent offense. So does LA. And when you're playing against LA, you hold them to six points going into the half and your offense cannot stay on the field. You're going to get winded and you're going to allow the big play. What's next for the New Orleans Saints? If we want to have a bright future, if we want to go to the playoffs, we need to do exactly what I just said. That's it. Establish a good 2QB rotation. Work off of each quarterback's strengths. Teddy Bridgewater is the more accurate of the two, while Taysom Hill is extremely athletic and explosive and can capture momentum very well. 
establish a run game. We can't get anywhere without Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray. It's just as simple as that. If, 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 if Teddy Bridgewater has to beat teams through the air, he's too rusty for that. We have to get a run game going no matter what, and against the Seahawks is a perfect time to do it if we want a chance at winning. The offensive line needs to shape up. Um, it's not just their fault. There have been literally a 40% increase within the past two weeks, three now, counting the Thursday night game that's going on currently, in holding penalties. They have been out of this world. The referees have been disgusting. The offensive line needs to step up. Eric McCoy, the rookie center, big task for him coming up. We need to lock up as a team. So just follow the pure, simple rules of football. Control the game. Control the clock. Get the ball moving on the ground. Just try to establish something with the play-action pass. Play smart. Play conservative. Don't be afraid to kick a field goal and play good defense. All perfect scenario, we win some ball games. I thank you guys for watching so much. I really want to know, what do you think is next for the New Orleans Saints? Do you think we do all of those things that I just mentioned? Uh, I know it's a bit of more of a what needs to happen for there to be a good next for the New Orleans Saints video than what the title is, but I didn't really know how to put that into a title. You know what I mean, guys, so... Go ahead and let me know. What do you think is next for the New Orleans Saints? I'm predicting the Saints go 4-4, four and four, so 3-3, three and three, while uh, Drew Brees is out. Exit 4-4, four and four, Drew Brees runs the table or dang near runs the table. We can either end up 10-6, and 11-5, or 12-4, and four, best case scenario. The ending of the schedule is extremely, extremely easy for us. Watch out. The Saints aren't done. We're not done. We're going to win some ball games. Come on, Houdat Nation. We got to support our team. If you don't sell your season tickets or don't throw your tickets out of the window because Drew's not in, go to those games. Be just as loud as you would for Drew, for Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill. I promise you they need it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it more than anything, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Make sure to comment your... Uh, Thoughts, feelings, concerns, whatever down below. I make sure to read all of them, respond to all of them, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Falling like Barkley, wrist so sparkly, internet surfing, feel like I Carly.